Can you grab a mic, Brenda? Bless them, Lord. The Lord has put this song in my head, and uh, He told me He wanted me to sing this for y'all, and especially for Him. So Amen. This song is for my Lord. I'm dedicating it to Him. Mm -hmm.
where you can watch him whenever he comes back and uh, see the man with his leg and everything. Amen. It'll be, it'll be, you'll be able to see what's happening. You even see people with clothes on. <laughs> some of the clothes that we have out there, you can see people with some of the clothes on. Because before, uh, whenever he would go over there, we would see young men, little kids, you know, with no clothes at all. And uh, whenever he went, the last time he came, uh, we were seeing the same kids and they had the clothes on and they, they were dressed, you know, with the, they're not new, but praise God, some of them were, you know, and, and thank God for them because, you know, anybody that will bless you and help you, he doesn't give them out to the cities, he goes out into the bush over in Honduras, he goes across these big old swinging bridges, that's all they got to walk across the swing, uh, with like the vines hanging on, he's got pictures of him doing all that, and, and the horses, they, they take the horses and mules and carry their uh, block and wood out to build them huts and things to live in. I'm going to tell you, uh, God's really blessed him. Uh, he's went through COVID to pray for him. Uh, this COVID doesn't, uh, uh, he, it gets everybody, it seems like. Uh, it seems like it's hitting Christian people harder than it is other people. And I can understand why, because God wants to slow the, I mean, God is wanting to increase the Christian people. Amen. And the devil's wanting to slow them down. That's right. And that's exactly the reason things are happening this way. But I tell you right now, God is soon coming and uh, all these things are going to be under our feet and uh, we'll be victorious over it. And I thank God for that. Turn with me to John chapter 20 this morning. I uh, wasn't going to speak on the resurrection, but God kept bringing me back to it and I thought about it. I was going to speak on something else and, and I, this morning I want you to think a little more than just the resurrection. I'm going to it's not about Jesus going away. It's about him coming back. Amen. Amen. He's already gone away. He's already at the right hand of the Father. But it's the coming back that you really need to concentrate on this morning because he's soon coming back. It's not going to be long. And if you don't have your house in order and you're not right with God and you're not standing before God in the right frame of mind and you haven't been saved, it's time to get your heart right. It's time to get ready. Uh, this old world is in a mess. Uh, some of you might not see it. You might think everything's good at your house and everything's wonderful at your house. Well, I can tell you right now, it can turn to hell in just a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, and it's getting ready to do it. It's getting ready yes, to do it. Yes, it is. Because uh, this old world is uh, for breaking up and it's getting ready to break up. So I hope that you get your heart and mind in tune with God. Uh, in verse 20 here, in verse 1 of uh, chapter 20, it says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene. Early. Hmm, Mary Magdalene. The world says she's a prostitute, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I've always heard. I've always heard that Jesus uh, loved this woman and she was a prostitute. How many of you know? How many of you realize this morning that whenever Jesus saves you, Amen. You're not what you were. Amen. Amen. Yes. You're a new person oh. in Christ. That's right. yeah. You see, that's what the, the world fails to see. Oh, yeah. I'm not what I was. I might have been a drunk. I might have been other things. But praise God, whenever you see me before you now, I'm a child of God. Amen. Because praise God, I Amen. chose to Thank serve Him. Lord. I chose to let Him come into my yes. heart. It's not what you were, but it's what you are right now. And if you're not a Christian right now, it's time to get your house in order. It's time to obey God. Yes, it is. But this Mary Magdalene here, I, I talked Wednesday night about how she took the ambassador box of oil yes. and she dumped it on Jesus' Amen. head for his death, burial, and resurrection. And all the disciples said, oh man, we should have took this and sold it and give it to the poor. They didn't realize that that anointing oil, that anointing oil was blessing our Lord and yes. Savior. Yes. That anointing oil as it run down across his forehead and down across his body, down across his clothes. Oh, and that smell that come out of that, it was a, a fragrance of love, a fragrance of, of compassion. Because this woman wasn't in love with Jesus because he was a man. She was in love with him because he was a God. Yes, because right. he Amen. was a God's son. She was in love with him because he was the one that could have saved her and took her out of the life that she was in. Amen. 
I'm so thankful tonight, this morning, that God has taken me out of the life that I was in. I'm so thankful this morning that God has blessed me and gave me a new road to hope. I'm going to tell you right now, I went down the other road and I was enjoying it for a while. Sin is good for a season. That's Some of it. you that might That's be in it. sin this morning, you might think everything's good in your life. But I can tell you, just as I said a while ago, hell is on its way. That's I can tell you that is. right now. Because the devil, he's going to get you out there. He Lord. thinks he's got you and he'll turn you loose. But there's a God that will never let you go. Oh, he'll yes. you up and he'll give you what you need in these last days. I yes, believe that with all my heart. <clears throat> Early, it was yet dark unto the sepulcher. And seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Hmm. Now, the world would have you to believe that somebody stole that body. Mm -hmm. But I believe if I read down a little further, you're going to find an angel. They were sitting on the tomb. Probably they were sitting there by the tomb. And that angel, <laughs> hallelujah, let's just read a little more. <laughs> Glory be God. I get excited. Then she runneth and came, cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Mm. Oh, look at Jesus is gone. And we don't know where he's at. He's gone. That's what the world would have you to believe this morning. That's right. The yeah. world would have you to believe this morning that they took Jesus off that old rugged cross. He was already broken. Not a bone was broken, but as far as his body, it was broken because they had torn the flesh out of his back. And the scholars say that you could even probably have seen his kidneys and all the workings of it in his back, but he was still alive, just barely. Mm -hmm. Then they stuck an old rugged cross on his back and had him drag that old rugged cross up Golgotha. Mm -hmm. Something that wasn't fit for a dog, they're giving to a God. But I still like the part, and I still love the part of where whenever the lightning flashed and the thunder rolled, that old guard that had been mean and big, mm -hmm. maybe the one that Brother Pat sings about that went and got those nails to drive in his palms or those spikes to drive in his palms and his feet. He looked up and he said, Surely this must have been the Son of God. Amen. Surely this must have been the Son of God. <laughs> this had to be God. You see, only God could have caused that thunder to flash. Only God could have caused that darkness to fall That's on right. the That's right. And they knew that. Today, we need to realize who's in charge. You might say, well, the devil looks like he's running the world right now. God's still in charge. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God's still in charge. The devil's just got his hand up. The devil's trying to show his hand, but God's still in charge. Yes, he is. He's running this land. As long as you and I are here, I, I, you know, I, I thought about it. I wouldn't want to be here a minute after the Spirit of God was gone. Uh -uh. I, I was looking at this last night, and I said, well, I'm going to just use the same scripture again as I use for sunrise service because I feel like whenever I look at this and I, I see this, I see that there's a God that loves us so much and we are use him so much. Yes, we, do. Uh, we use him whenever we want to use him and then we put him in a box whenever we don't want to use him. There's a lot of people that will be in church today, the only day they'll ever be in church on uh, the year is on Easter Sunday. As I tell you this, we need to learn to love him 365 Amen. 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 366 of us believe here. Yes. Because he's our Lord and Savior. Yes. You know, he, he paid a tremendous price that you and I might have the salvation. I mean, you know, the, even God to have to send his only begotten son to be our Savior. It would have to be hard. I know I said some of this Wednesday night, but I want to ask you one more time. Which one of you in here would be willing to give up one of your children mm. that somebody could be saved? Mm -hmm. I don't believe one of us would. <coughs> but God was willing to do that. Amen. You say, yeah, but he was God. Amen. What if he would ask us to do? There was a place in the Bible he did ask the man to do that, didn't he? Yep. 
but just so happened he supplied a ram yes. stuck in a pit. Take the place of his son. That's the God we're serving. Yeah. He's always there for us. I thought about how God has blessed us through the years and how God has given us the blessings and anointed us and kept us safe under his arms. It says that God is like a mother hen. Whenever the storm is on, and everything's going wrong, he's like a, you ever, you ever seen a hen? I remember back whenever we was raised up and we had chickens outside all the time. And a storm would come up real quick. That old chicken, you'd hear her start hollering. Mm -hmm. And they got a certain holler and those chicks would come a run. <laughs> and she'd squat down and they'd get under those wings. And they'd hide under those wings. Yep. You know God does the same thing. Yes, us. he does. He blesses us the same way. He anoints us the same way. Yes, it's amazing. And if an old hawk would come around and the whole hawk would start screeching, you'd see those wings spread out. She'd start hollering. Here they come. You see, God's the same way. When everything's going wrong in the world and everything looks like it's upside down, God just calls us under his wings. God blesses us. Sometimes some of you don't realize how much God's dealing with you. Sometimes some of you don't realize how much God's trying to draw you under That's right. Him. And a lot of times we're running away from that drawing. But I tell you this morning, we need to be discerning that drawing and going to it. Because yes. I'm going to tell you something, we're going to need that protection before long. This old world's going to need the protection yes, of Jesus. It is. It's coming. It's coming quickly. And we're going to need it very quickly. Very quickly. I thought about the mother of Jesus mm. Mm. having to see her son hang on the door. Give his life for a world. Everybody out there <coughs> hollering, crucifying, killing, whatever. They want him to destroy. Give us Barabbas. Give us a thief. Give us somebody that's stealing. Give us a. Hey, I hear that in the world today. How about you? Yep. A lot of times we hear these things in the world today. Give us somebody that will take from us. Yep. Give us somebody that don't love us rather than giving us somebody that cares for us. Mm -hmm. Somebody that will bless us. God will bless you. Church, if we could give Jesus to everybody in this world, it would change yes. the whole world. Yes, it would. They would. You wouldn't have to go home and make sure that you had all kind of Hammers all around in your yard, in your house. <laughs> now you got to have them at your post. Now you got to have them at your mailbox. Mm -hmm. you got to have one at your front door. Well, that's the truth. you got to have a camera everywhere just to make sure they're not going to steal or what little bit you got. Mm -hmm. And all that you got to do is just say, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Take me to That's right. And you know what? God will just back He'll protect you. And take care of you. But you see, we fail to do that sometimes. That's the God we're serving. That's the God that came out of that tomb. That's the God that was laid in that tomb and loves you and cares for you. That's the man that was able to walk upon this earth for 33 years, never say a bad word, never do anything wrong. That was a, you see, whenever the world looks at Mary Magdalene, they don't look at her as what she was here. They kept looking at her what she was. Whenever everybody looks at you, they don't see Jesus a lot of times. That's right. They see who you were. That's right. They come to church and they'll say, Oh, I remember you when. Yep. But you know what Jesus says? I don't remember those things. Anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, and I'm glad he don't. Amen. I'm glad he don't. That's what Calvary's all about. It's him forgiving you of your sins. Saying, Come into the fold. I love you. I protect right. you. I'll be with you. Who else in the world will tell you that? I mean, you know, your husband, your wife, they tell you that, but <laughs> and let's look out sometimes it's short-lived, isn't it? <laughs> short-lived. <laughs> short but with Jesus, it's forever. Amen. With Jesus, it's forever. That's right. It really is. You don't have to worry about him. And if you turn your back on him and walk away from him, and then you'll do a 90-degree turn, you'll find out he's been there all. Oh, Amen. Yes. Amen. The tomb might have been empty, but in my heart, I feel like it was full. Amen. 
It might not have been full of Jesus, but it was full of his spirit because yes. this world is full of the spirit of Jesus. Amen. People are now, they're trying to go to Mars, they're trying to go everywhere else, and trying to find another place to live. They're saying, well, there ain't no water on Mars, and then you can look out and you can see all those spiders running over Mars, and they say, oh, those spiders, I'm going to tell you what, I don't know where they filmed it at, but I don't believe it was Mars. But anyway, I'll leave that alone, I'll just go on with this. I believe that they're running away from God. Yes. And you can't run from God. No, you can't. You ain't. You can get on Mars and you can be standing right in the middle of Mars. And I'm going to tell you something. The same God that created yes. Mars is the same God. Yes, he that is. Come on. That's and right. I want you to know something. You can't outrun God. There's no way. I don't care if Bill Gates gets in his eyes or whoever's uh, creating all this stuff and they figure they're going to take all their monies and all these things and they're going to Mars. Well, praise God, the same sin that they're living in it will go with them and that the same God that they're serving, he'll go with them. But I can tell you right now, we better be putting God first. We better know that it's God that we're serving. Amen. We better know that it's this, this God that we're trying to live and do the things that he's called us to do with. That's right. I look at this scripture. And I see the humiliation that Jesus took. I mean, how many of us, be honest now, would allow children to beat on us and not say a word? How many of us? There are people that do. Mm. Would stand before Pilate and him accuse us of doing things that we didn't do. Boy, if we'd be going out, we'd buy, be trying to buy every lawyer we possibly could to stand mm -hmm. up for us. But he knew what his mission was. Yeah. Uh -uh. He knew where he was headed. And he didn't question. We questioned everything. He didn't come up and say, the only thing I find where he said anything was whenever he was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Lord, let this pass, this cup pass. But nevertheless, thy will be done. Amen. In other words, Lord, if there's any other way that I don't have to go to Calvary. Uh -huh. Lord, if there's any, Father, if there's any other way that I don't have to lay down my life, mm -hmm. let it be done. But there was only one way that you and I this morning could come to this church and worship God. Right. Amen. And that was through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, you know, I think about all the things that he did for us and how he blessed us, even before we were even thought of. Even before we even thought of. Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes back to how, you know, we in our house we grew up poor. We didn't have a lot of things that, that the world had. And, yeah. and the things that, <laughs> but, you know, we had what we needed, and we had God. That's right. See, if you've got God, you've got everything you need anyway. Mm -hmm. The problem with people today, they want everything but God. Yeah. Give me this. Give me that. But all we need is God to be satisfied. We didn't know, as kids, we didn't know we were rich. You say, well, y'all were dumb. No, we weren't dumb. We just didn't know. We had things and we were blessed. We didn't know what everybody else had. Didn't worry about what everybody That's else right. had. That's right. And you see, you're blessed when you're that way. And I thank God for being raised up that way. Some of you might say, well, I feel sorry for you. You feel sorry for me all you want to. I don't care. We might not have had a bathroom in a house until I was 16 years old, but I could have lived at home the rest of my life without one. I didn't know any different. That's what I'd always done. Right. And praise God, I got, I got used to it. Amen. People say, oh, man, I wouldn't want to live that way. I'm going to tell you something. If God's in it, That's right. nothing wrong with any of it. You don't have to have everything that the world is. You see, that's what our problem is. Whenever we look at the scriptures, a lot of times we're trying to put the world into it. You can't put the world in this scripture. This, this scripture is separated. It's become holy. And praise God, that's what you've got to do. Amen. You've got to separate yourself from the world right. and become holy. He's not going to accept a half-hearted person. He wants a person that will give up the world yes. and serve him. Amen. And that's the reason he went to Calvary. That's the reason he went to a bar too. I think about, you know, you, you think about a bar or tomb, you think, well, why in the world would you go to a bar or tomb? Because he only needed it just a few days. That's right. It was just something that he was going to be there just a moment or two. He didn't need a place to lay his head and stay there forever. I'd love to put a 
graveyard out here and start it before long. But I don't want a place where I have to lay there forever. That's right. I want my soul to go on to heaven. Amen. I want to be in heaven with Jesus. Amen. I have, I have a desire to serve him. I have a desire to do what he wants me to do so I can go to heaven. Uh, I don't preach because I love to preach, and I do love to preach, don't get me wrong, but what I'm getting at is this. I preach because God has called me to do this. Right. I preach because of, there's a calling in my life, and therefore he says his calling was without repentance. So if you don't preach, then you can't go to heaven. You say, now wait a minute, I'm called to preach, and I, I've quit preaching. I don't know how you retire from preaching. Amen. I don't know how you quit preaching. I went to a, a house yesterday, and I was talking to them, and I had talked for a good little bit. And I went outside, and I thought, I haven't asked them to come to church. So I went back in the house. Amen. And I said, love to have you in church sometime. You see, we miss opportunities like yes. that. And then you might say, well, I'm not a preacher, so why should I have to say that? Why should I have to do those things? Because, because we're disciples of Christ. That's right. that's right. And we're supposed to be winning souls. You see, that's what God went to, to the cross. Jesus went to the cross for. That's the reason this, the God said, I'll allow my son to go. That's the reason these things are happening. He says, I'll send you another comforter. I'll send you one, even though I'm taking my son away from you. He said, I'll send you a comforter. And whenever Jesus was taken away from us, praise God, we got the Holy Ghost. We got power with God. Amen. And whether you know it or not, the reason people don't want the Holy Ghost is because the Holy Ghost causes you to live close to God. Amen. And you say, well, I got the Holy Ghost whenever I went to the altar. You got a form of the Holy Ghost, but praise God, you can get a deeper Amen. walk with God. Yes. Oh. And let Hallelujah. Jesus fill you with the Holy Ghost from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. The reason people aren't filled today is because they're not really calling upon the name of the That's Lord. Right. That's right. That's right. This is a good book. This book, book is true. Whenever I read you this word, it was penned down by man. But whenever I read it, it says it was inspired by God. Amen. How many other books do you read that says inspired by God? Most of the time it's inspired by them because they're after the money they That's get out right. of the book. Never any words in this book have I seen that God asked for a royalty on it. That's right. It was inspired for man and man's soul. God never asked for a penny for his son to come and open the door for you. You say, well, brother, you have to pay a tithe. Well, you know, that belonged to God anyway. And I've tried using that other 10%. And boy, does it make a mess. Yes, it does. <laughs> so I reckon it's just good to have the 90% of God's money and let him bless it. That's right. But I'm going to tell you, the tomb was empty, but Jesus <coughs> wasn't dead. Jesus wasn't dead. He walked upon this earth. Yes, he did. For a short time, witness to the disciples. I can imagine no doubt in Thomas. Mm -hmm. Couldn't believe until he stuck his finger <coughs> in the palm of his hand and felt that nail mark or that spot mark. And then he believed. A place that Jesus went to, man did not create anything in that land except for the nail prints they left in Jesus. Wow. Boy, that's something to be proud of, isn't it? Amen. We'd have to have that and say we made that upon this earth. You say, I didn't live back then. I sort of consider myself guilty before I really turned my heart over to God. I lived like the devil wanted me to, acted like the devil wanted me to. So therefore, I feel like during that time, I'm saying crucify. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I'm so thankful. That I know he came out of that tomb today. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful to know that he's at the right hand of the Father. Amen. I'm thankful to know that he's there interceding for you and I. I don't know how close you are to God. I don't know where you're standing with God this morning. 
people says, well, me and Jesus got our own thing going on. That doesn't work. Nope. <coughs> if it don't line up with the word, then Jesus ain't got nothing going on. Everything that you do has got to line up with the word. Right. People are cursed sometimes and they apologize to you or me. It don't hurt me. It don't bother me. It hurts God. That's right. Because we're disobeying. And other times you'll hear people cursing, not even think anything about it. That's right. Use God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. And come and die on the low rugged cross, went to the tomb, rose from the grave, <coughs> that you and I could have salvation. Mm -hmm. And we still look at it that way. I stand before you this morning telling you that if you're going to serve this God, you want to food first. That's right. He's not going to take just part of you. Says, well, I'll give this to God and then I'll go do this next week. It don't work. Either you're serving God or you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either you're putting Him first or you're not. You've got to die out to this old world just like Jesus did. He says, become a pilgrim walking through this land, not lying, hold on it. Last time I saw somebody die, I've never seen anybody have a big old breach truck or one of these big trucks following them to the graveyard. Most times they left somebody alive that would take what they gained or inherited. I've been to a lot of sales on Saturdays, of estate sales, and people have worked all their life and gained all these things and they can sell them one day. Yep. The only thing that is blessing us what Jesus and us have going on between us and him. All you gain upon this earth will not prosper you with it. All the things that you have in your life, you might say, well, I own this and I own that. I know a guy who used to, he used to sit around and he'd say, well, I own a house here and I own a house there and I own trailers over here. I own these things. I'm thinking to myself, but if you don't have Jesus, one of those things won't prosper you. That's right. You see, we've got to have Jesus. We've got to have this Lord. You might say, I've made it all right without him so far. But when is Jesus going to say, enough's enough? That's right. When's God going to look over the sun and say, go get your children? It's going to be too late then. People are going to cry out. Mm -hmm. Sister, they're going to cry. You're going to be able, if you were left here, you'd be able to hear them holler. Because they know they've been left behind. That's right. I said, Brother Keith, you shouldn't be saying this on Easter Sunday. It's true. I think it's a good time to say it. Amen. Amen. Because I don't know of anything I'd rather give to Jesus that if there's a person in here this morning and they don't know Jesus as their personal Savior, that if they give their soul to Jesus, it'd be worth it all. That's right. It'd be worth it all. The devil's fighting every one of us harder than he's ever fought us. Some reason though, all I could do was walk sideways. So I had to turn like this and walk to the barn. My head was hurting me so bad I couldn't stand it. The devil was telling me, he said, You can't go to church. <laughs> You're not going to be able to do what you've been doing. I don't know what's wrong with 
me. I know it's COVID that the long haul of COVID is messing me up. But I can tell you this. I'm telling the devil, if I had to stand up here and walk down the hall, I mean down the aisle here sideways and preach, I'll walk down the side. Amen. I preach. It don't matter. If I wake up with a headache and I wake up and my wife has to help me to the car and I'm able to come, I'm going to be in church to preach. That's right. Because whenever I feel that anointing of God, yes. and I get that anointing upon me, I don't feel any pain. I don't hurt. If God can do that for me, think what he can do for your soul. That's right. Man, you might be lost this morning and undone without God. I can remember whenever I was lost and didn't know about God, I'd got to the point of where I was weary to death that I wasn't going to make heaven my own. God convicted me of living in sin. I had to start by giving up her before God would save my soul. That's right. You say, Brother Ken, I wouldn't stand up there and tell that. I'm ashamed of what I did, but I'm a proud of where I am right now. Amen. Every eye closed, nobody looking around. You're just thinking about yourself. I don't do this very often. But I need to know how to pray for you this morning. You know you're saved.
You know, a small number like this, there's a lot of people that aren't sure. And I want you to know this morning, I honestly believe this, and I'm not predicting an hour or a time, but I believe that this might be the last Easter we spend on this side of heaven. As Christians. I believe the Christians getting ready to go home. And whenever they do, the Spirit of God will be drawn out. You say, well, I'll get saved after that. How can you get saved without the Spirit? The Bible says the only way that you can be saved is if, if the Spirit draws you. With no Spirit dealing with man, he's going to turn back to the Jew. How's God going to do it? Church, now's the day of salvation. Come out from among the dead and be renewed with the Spirit of God. Let Jesus fill you with His Spirit. And I beg you this morning to come to this altar. Let Jesus come into your life. Let Him be Lord and Savior of you. He'll meet you here if you'll let Him. He's dealing with hearts this morning. I know that. There's some of you stand here this morning that he's dealt with you before, but he's dealing with you again. Now, what will you do with it? Will you come to this altar, repent of your sins, and accept Jesus? You say, Brother Ken, I don't know what to say. Well, I promise you that you'll never have to do nothing but make the first step. Jesus will make the rest of them for you. And he'll tell you what to say whenever you hit this altar. I didn't need nobody behind me saying what I need to say. Because the Spirit of God to give you what to say. And you don't have to worry. Because it's between you and God and nobody else. But you've got to make that first step this morning.